Hey guys, this is an introduction to the tools for spinning. See, I have put together a set of spinning tools for my friend Bethany out of what I could find around. You guys know me, I'm all about DIY, making do and doing things cheaply. So because I had a large quantity of wool already, I prepared an entire setup for her. Bethany, I also know that I'm not going to be there to walk you through this. So this video is also to explain what the pieces are, how to use them. I'll probably throw some links, usually up in this corner, to some other videos that can explain what some of these tools are, how to use them, and the techniques you need to use. So let's start with the tools. I made this dual purpose spindle because Bethany, I don't know whether you're going to prefer to spin top whirl, that is with this round part facing up, or bottom whirl. I know that for me personally, I like bottom whirl. I feel like it balances things better, but everyone's different. Now, I have already tied on a piece of yarn. This is called a leader. This is what allows you to fasten on your wool when you start spinning. So let's see the way this is set up right now. We can do top whirl. Nope, that's bottom whirl. Notice that I have the hooks there to help you. So you're going to go through a hook. For me, I often try to pull there, create a slip knot so I can put the end of my wool in. You know, much like, and I'm sure you know this from knitting and crocheting. So that will hold on to your wool and then you can start actually spinning. So this piece here is called a wrist distaff. It looks like a bracelet, but it has these long pieces with the beads. This is for helping to keep our roving organized. Now, I'm right-handed, so I spin with my right hand. I hold my extra fiber with my left. So we put this onto our left hand. We split the beads and stick our roving, our combed fibers through there. Don't want anything to fall. And then we wrap it around here just to keep things organized while we're spinning. And we can start spinning from that. Other tools. From an old yardstick, I carved down an inch so that way you can check your gauge. Uh, one of the ways that we often refer to gauge is how many wraps per inch. So I have a notch for one inch here. You loosely wrap your yarn that you're making in here and see how many wraps it takes to go in there. Um, there's a guide. Uh, I'll try to link it in the description. But for comparing wraps per inch here with your weight, like sport weight yarn, I'm sorry, yeah, sport weight yarn, sock yarn, things like that. Um, this is a breakdown knitty knotty. Still need to glue those pieces in, but just some copper pieces that come apart. That way you can store all of this in a handy bag here. But this right here lets you take your finished yarn off of your spindle, loop it around here, Again, I have a video to show you how to use a nitty knotty, but loop it around here so that way you can create a skein that you can tie together, wash to set the twist. After you've done that, then you're going to use this. It's called a nostopini, I think. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I turned this one myself. I'm just starting to play with the lathe. Lots of fun. But this lets you hold some yarn down in this notch here. Hold some yarn and then begin to create a center pull ball around here that you can slide off when you're done. So lastly, we have your fibers. As I already said, these are roving. These are combed and what happens is our fibers are all laying the same way down this entire long piece, which lets us make this really 
tougher. I've heard it's more abrasion resistant. This is my first attempt of making any yarn from the combed fibers. Yes, I made a duplicate of your spindle and I've been having fun doing this. Um, but you can see it's kind of smoother, it's a bit harder, it's not as fluffy. Whereas the other type of fiber is called a rolag. So a rolag is made by carding and the fibers are actually aligned this way, but we spin it from the end like this. And what happens is that the carded fibers give you a fluffier yarn. This is the type that's usually warmer. So you get kind of a trade-off between longer lasting and fluffier and warmer from catching all the air. These are both me spinning my own version from the same kind of fibers that you're getting here. Um, I'll link some videos that talk about how to actually do the drop spinning, but as you start, you're going to want to use a technique called um, parking and drafting, which means when you have your fiber hooked into your leader, you're going to want to spin it. For me, I'm always spinning with this flicking motion, but then after you get some twist, just set it down. I, can, I will often even hold it still with my leg and start pulling out some fiber, letting the twist travel up. Pull it out, let the twist travel up. Don't try to go very thin in the beginning. It might not be very regular, it might not be very even. That comes with practice. And what I've given you here is a bunch of fiber just to start practicing and learning the techniques. I've prepped all this fiber myself. I'm not going to pretend that it is the best fiber but it's what I have to give you. So Bethany, that's what I have. Your fiber, your tools. I wish you happy spinning. Um, anyone else that has any questions, any suggestions for a new spinner, let me know in the comments below. Um, and I hope that clears up what you got, Bethany. I'll talk to the rest of you later.